Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today we get to tackle the Clover Stack Interchange. This is a really exciting one. It's like a four level stack, but it's only two levels high because of the use of loops. And speaking of the loops, today I get to show off a new technique for measuring out loops on a given overpass. Something a little more realistic, something a little more um, plausible in real life, because real loops are typically not circles. What you generally want is something that has a more consistent g-force when going around the whole thing so traffic is allowed to slow and speed up at a at a decent rate i'll show you how that works and more in just a moment feel free to subscribe if you want to everyone thank you for being here let's build the clover stack our story begins as all good stories do with a highway overpass no good stories start that way but ours certainly does let's uh let's do this i want to show you how to make the loops that are required for the clover stack. There are two opposing loops. I used to make them circular in nature, but now I've discovered that there's actually a better way. Uh, I've got these perpendicular roads crossing here, of course, 12 unit overpass, all good. Standard start for things. What I wanna do is use the road guidelines from one of these parallel roads to make a, a shape. I'm gonna show you, this is our new curve. This is called a clothoid loop. And I'll start by making kind of a half circle. And this happens to be seven by seven, which is a rather large curve, but that's exactly what I want for this. This is a system interchange. It's gonna take up a lot of space, but it's also free flowing. So it's worth taking up the space if your city needs it. So we have a 14 unit diameter. And what I wanna do is take that value, do whatever value you want for your curve, but take that diameter and send it down away from the edges that you've just created, away from the, the ends of the curve. What that gives us are these points at the bottom. We're only doing this as scaffolding to get this point. Now we can take our freeform road tool, go off the end and connect to the bottom there. So you end up with a 14 by 14 curve going to the bottom. We can do that on both sides. Very nice. And this should look fairly familiar, not just from highway ramps, but also from roller coasters. A clothoid loop, this is an approximation of it. It's not a real clothoid loop, but essentially what amounts to a clothoid loop is what's used on roller coasters to help ease traffic into the narrowest part and then out of the narrowest part, right? The, the most, the tightest radius of this is found up here. And then this lower radius is twice as much so traffic gets eased into and out of the clothoid loop on both sides. It's very advantageous for roller coasters, highway ramps, uh, trains may also use this type of design, but it's very useful to know how to create it. Now we just have to move the clothoid loop into position over here. I know we're not actually gonna need these bottom sections, so I'm gonna get rid of them. And even these lower sections are not necessary. This is the portion that matters. The, that last little bit is gonna happen on the highway itself. You'll see in a moment. So we'll take our horseshoe. Uh, I did it perpendicular to this road so that I can select the whole thing, hold alt, right click it, and then drag for 45 degree snapping. So I've rotated it 45 degrees. I know we're gonna need it here and here in these opposing corners. And this is really just to measure. So check it out. I'm gonna move it into position uh, I want the road, I want it to be centered in such a way that this node here matches up with these roads, give or take. Which also happens to be, uh, it makes the crossing happen about here. So where these roads intersect, the, con the roads that we're connecting with the loop, so too shall the, the clothoid aim at, basically. But yeah, that's about what it's going to be. From this, I need three measurements. I need to know three things, or two things, really. One thing that I need to know is how far is it from this point to this point? 45 degree angle, just about. And 20 units, give or take. Yep, that's good. I eyeballed the moving of it, so this measurement is not gonna be exact, but 20 units is, is pretty good looking. And then where do the connection points occur is the second question. For this one, it's about seven units away, you know, just round numbers. Yeah, give or take seven units. Should be the same for both. So the distance from this point to the crossing highway should be about seven units. 
Or for this, I'm gonna take the edge of the ramp and we'll do that. So it's about three units away from the edge of the ramp. So I'll make a marker at each of those spots. There's already one there, but that's okay. So that's the endpoints, and we know this one's 20 units away. What I'll do now is actually delete the thing, because I know my numbers, and I know we're gonna end up 20 units diagonal to get this right. I'm gonna turn off road guidelines, because they are gonna get in the way. So 45 degrees, 20 units away. That gives us the origin point of the, kind of the apex of the clothoid. This is not a math channel, and I'm not actually that good at math, but I do care deeply about uh, highway ramps, so this stuff became important to learn at some point, I guess. <laughs> so I'm gonna remake our seven by seven curve, but this one is now in position accurately. The other one I was doing was would not have snapped the way that I want it, uh, but this one's in place accurately, and we love that. Now we just have to get these ends to connect here. So I'm gonna use the freeform road tool, going off the end of this, straight, and we're gonna click that point that we measured out. It's probably gonna look a little weird. No, it actually looks awesome. Marvelous, so that exists. Same thing on the other side, freeform road tool, click the point that we marked off, and delete that, hopefully it doesn't look horrible. Yeah, it's, you know, it'll look better with a little, a little node controller, a little bit of love. But that is essentially the highway loop that I want. Of course it looks a bit funky, but like I said, a little little bit of love from node controller would, would solve that generally. Here's the rough pass. And there it is. So you can see how traffic would exit sort of comfortably, kind of slowly easing out and then hitting the hard part of the radius and then easing back in again. The loops are in. Thank you for bearing with on that uh, explanation of the clothoid loop. It's a bit more technical than what I usually do, but I figured it was worth worth going into, especially when that's like the point of these ramps. So I figure I'll be adopting that more in the future. That takes care of the left turns for the underpass. So that's left turning traffic going under, but the uh, that's the clover part. The stack part is big loops that go around the outside of these. So the way I'm gonna do the loops, let's turn on road guidelines. I'm gonna go five meters in the air and I'm gonna go three units from the ends of those circles. So just to get a kind of a measuring point, I want that point on both sides. So three units away using node snapping or using uh, road guidelines rather. Great. Now the distance between these two, we need to figure out, this is the diameter. So about 52 units, give or take more or less, about 52. So half of that is 26. So let's do this, 20, uh, let's go 90 degrees off of that. Your, your measurements will vary, but what we want here is for this, assuming your highways are perpendicular, it should hit about in the center of the highway. So 26 units up, and we want this to be elevated too. 26 units up, 26 units over. I swear it's not as complicated as I'm making it sound. <laughs> All right, 26 units. Very nice, and then we can finish this curve. Actually, here, let's do this. We'll do a freeform road tool from here. And I'm just gonna complete this curve as if this were the destination. It is not actually the destination, but I'm completing it as if it were because close enough. Cool, so we've got that. I'm gonna finish off this loop by doing the same thing on the other side, so 26 units perpendicular. By perpendicular, I mean straight off the end. Perpendicular to the guide road, of course. 26 by 26. And freeform road tool back from this one will give us the complete loop. Now there's a magic point or two down here that's gonna end up being sent to negative five. Negative five is the low point on this build, as I've decided. So I'm going to send these down preemptively, knowing that they're going to have to get down there eventually. And a lot of these are going to become grounded as well. Let's delete our markers here. Let's turn these roads the right way. Uh-huh. Oh, entirely the wrong way. We've made a big circle that's disconnected from the rest of it. That's okay. That's what it's supposed to be for now. For all of the right turns, it's going to be the same process repeated four times. So we're going to take 
the apex of this external curve and all of these will have it based on the way I've made this all of these points exist where there are just these exterior nodes going all the way out and we're gonna go three units out from the last one that we just made and what I want to do is use freeform road tool go sideways and do whatever kind of looks nice I don't know maybe maybe about there how many is that 124 yeah that looks good so about 15 units, that gives us a 28.8 degree connection on the node side, on the on that road there. That is fine. 28.8, 15 units, 124. Okay. So we'll stick with that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. Make a nice, easy corner. Shooting for as close to 124 as possible. There we go. Turn this around. If you want it to look slightly nicer... I think you can take a node controller, or sorry, move it, hold alt, and kind of refine that center point of the curve. And then absolutely, with a, with a bit of node controller here, anything can happen. I Typically, here's my process. I make the node as small as possible, and I hit make ends straight, and then I extend the this one as far as I want, usually in increments of 10, so maybe that's what it looks like. That's pretty good. I'll end up sloping it and changing the heights of things in a little while, but for now I'm just going to make all of those uh, all of those right turns. Many of you have probably noticed that the giant loop does absolutely nothing and is absolutely connected to nothing. That is clearly not going to be the case for long. Let me show you how to actually set this up. So we're going to delete these, what amounts to two segments for me. So those are going to go away, and we are going to reconnect them differently. The destination point was important, but now that's that's no longer what it needs to be. So we're going to use the freeform road tool, and I'm actually going to connect it to this node over here. I think I like that one. I usually like to work with whatever nodes already exist. I mean, this we've been relying on this center node for everything, so I think that's a really good spot to hinge this off of. So that works for me. And this road is going to be an overpass, elevated, that connects... Uh, yeah, we'll see how this split works out by the end. But it is important that these two roads cross. So this will go back the other way. That will go that way. Very nice, very nice. That exact same thing has to happen over here as well. But this is important. Don't forget to do this. The other thing is, for height reasons, I'm going to align this destination with the, the low end. So negative 5 and this one should already be positive 5 meters. Nice. And on all sides, I'll end up using the uh, network multi-tool to slope these. This is going to have uh, no slope. Yeah, it's going to be just zero to get under there. That's fine. And then we'll get this going down to the bottom here. It already is. That's good. And as long as this looks like it has enough clearance for vehicles, I think it does. I don't have a measuring stick on me. Uh, let's see if we have a, perhaps a truck. Do I have a truck or a van? I'll always see one later, but do I have a van? Ice cream van. Yeah, if it works for the ice cream van, it works for me. The trucks are not drastically taller than this than this model. Though it would be nice if I had some custom trucks around, because then I could do this. But yeah, that's, that's plenty of space for most vehicles, I think. Uh, I'm going to do this on the other side, and then we will fix these little bridges here. Not a bad set of bridges, in my opinion. That, that worked out okay. Let me show you what I did to get to this point on this side. So I'm actually just going to delete all of the highways that are, that are uh, in place right now in favor of just making new ones. For the way that I've done this, it works out to uh, 15 units away from this. Five units up, of course. There we go. And it'll be a seven unit overpass. So we're gonna elevate it, seven units to get over. That looks good. And then I'm gonna ground it again and reconnect it to the end. So let's let's reverse that. We'll go right to the point here. Snap to it. Very nice. Elevated for seven units. Ground it again back to the bottom. Looks good to me. 
Uh, if you ever build something and you notice that the edges don't really line up, it's probably because node controller is trying to do stuff that you don't really need it to do. So what I like to do on these is just click each of them and click the delete button. Even if nothing happens, it'll make sure there's no anomalies and the, the edges will line up. So that cliff will line up and the road is pretty much centered between the two. So I like how that looks a lot. Uh, if you ever notice empty patches like this, same thing, click it with node controller, hit delete, that will fix it. So speaking of node controller, I'm gonna go around and fix all of the lane math. In some places there will be four lanes coming in, in some places there will be two lanes, in some places there will be two lanes. I'm just gonna go in and adjust all of the roads and the nodes, and um, it should help loads. And here we have it, the completed clover stack. It is quite large, and that's okay. That's uh, that's kind of how system interchanges tend to be. So, clover leaf interchanges, stack interchanges. Uh, this one is also free flowing. All free flowing interchanges tend to be very large because they need to accommodate these looping movements or these large uh, left turn flyovers, that type of thing. So, it's got elements of a clover leaf. It's got elements of a stack. It's a clover stack. It's big. It handles as much traffic as the game can throw at it. I sign off on this. As long as your lane math is decent, you shouldn't really run into, into any traffic problems as every vehicle has its own lane uh, to travel in. There are a few merges. So there's a few spots where I, I merged two lanes together uh, into a two lane road and then merged it back down to one before re-merging with the highway. A lot of merging going on. But generally, I like to keep the lane math on point, generally. I just really didn't want to go up to four lane highway uh, overall. So it's designed to be three lane highway and then expand to four lane in certain spots. Where necessary, it expands to a four lane situation so that you have kind of a departing lane that appears right before the exit. But overall, I'm very satisfied with the result. The curves are doing their job. You'll notice that vehicles are eased into the curve and then they go around the sharpest part and then they're eased back out and able to speed up again. City Skylines doesn't really represent that very well, but <laughs> in real life, that's that's an important thing is to not make a circular ramp. I've seen a few actually. Dubai has some interchanges that have, uh, it might even be a clover stack actually, but it has interchanges that are circles, which is interesting to me. They're probably just huge. If it's so huge that it doesn't matter, then that's fine. These are fairly modest loops, I would say. And overall, the scale of this is probably similar to how these operate in real life. So it is, it is very large in game, but system interchanges are large. That is that is how they have to be. Uh, but this was very fun to build. Hopefully I can, I can get it in the Steam Workshop soon. Uh, within the next day or two, it'll be in the description. Uh, but there it is. Pretty cool, right? I like the Clover stack a lot. It takes up a ton of space, but it moves traffic like crazy and it's only two levels high. So I think that's very, very cool. Also that clothoid loop, that whole technique for making the clothoid loop really um, looks much better in my opinion, functions a bit better with traffic going around it consistently. I, I'm a big fan. Um, little discoveries like that make a big difference in my opinion. Everyone, don't forget to subscribe here. Feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. I also stream twice a week on Twitch. So feel free to come by for a live stream. And we have a community Discord. If you want to join up, feel free to chat in the meantime. That's all I've got. Everyone, thank you so much for watching the whole video. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.